Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome your face back to a new logo critique. If you don't know who I am, I am a graphic designer, logo designer, hand lettering artist, and I put these videos out online of you critiquing your logos because it's fun and I get to teach you a little bit about your own work and to see where you can improve. In this video, I'm gonna be critiquing a couple of people's logos and showing them what they could do differently and I'm gonna go into more depth with them hopefully as well. So this first one is from Simon. Simon is a graphic designer from Hungary. He used to work as a print and graphic designer for a company and I can't pronounce his full name because I don't wanna get it wrong, but he's called STB Design. So the first part of this is that you've shown me your actual logo in different mock-up styles and I think they're really cool. I like the logo, it stands out. I mean, the placement could be changed a little bit for the previewing it or showing people or proposing it to people, you know? I like the fact that you got it on a t-shirt to show that the design is very useful and it can vary in usage. You've also got cool compositions in your business cards, which is pretty cool, I like that. And obviously having your logo up in a mock-up like this on a big tall building is going to help as well. It just looks cool, I like the look of it. I think your design works well. So the first thing is I'm gonna look at your designs in Illustrator here. Now this is your icon logo. So this is the logo that you'll be putting on your business cards and whatnot. What I like about this is that you, you've got a very unique sort of shape here. But I think the issue comes in this placement here. Now, first off, what I would do instantly is I would ungroup this and I'll take your icon, which is here, and I'll take this. I'm going to center everything here and make sure it's all aligned. For some reason, I just like the look of it when you have logos like this, when there's hierarchy with them, you know? It just looks a lot better when you're proposing it to someone. If it's on a website and you have to have it up at the top left, that's fine, but if not, just have it like this. Then you can group them together and bring them like this. Now, I know your company logo is black and white. I like it. You've also got a lot of blue in there that I've seen. So I'm not gonna steal that particular sort of cyan blue. But what I might do is actually change your icon a little bit as well. So I'm going to go ahead and move this and copy this over to the right. And something that I'm a bit confused by, but I kind of get is this play here on the S here. You've got like these curves that stick out and I get what you're trying to do, but I think we can make it a little bit nicer and more balanced. And the way that I do this is through a box method. So whenever I'm doing a logo design or something, I try and keep things very balanced. Uh, and by this, I know that you've tried this within a square, but you can see there's a few different shapes here if I was to make this into a guide. There's a few places in this sort of guide here that you can see where the box isn't filled. And that means, doesn't mean generally it's not balanced, but I think we could do a better job of balancing it. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this part here, or even so, we're going to bring this in a little bit. And we're going to bring this out a little bit. And then we're probably gonna bring this in a little more again. And I know this is probably gonna take the flair off your design a little bit, but don't worry. Because what I'm trying to do is make it even more balanced for you. And we do this by moving the box to the outer layers or the outer portions here. So now we've got like this equal box here. This box is literally just a proper square or a cube or whatever you wanna call it. Now that we've got this, it works pretty well. We can move this back, these little anchor points back. We'll see how that works. It's just these little subtle changes that I see. And this is why it's good to get your logo critiqued. So you can see stuff like this. Awesome, so I'm gonna take this ungroup it again and we're going to put them side by side in a little comparison here. So over here you can see the two differences. It's not a major difference but what I do think works better is the one on the right and I still really want to just take this anchor point and do something with it. So probably what I would like to do actually is I'm going to make a little square here. I'm going to make it white just to show you what I like. Even having something cut off like that might give it a bit more of an angled look. So what I've done there is put like this square on there. It gives it more of an angled look and you could even replicate this for the top part here as well if you wanted to. Well, let's get rid of that part just to see what it would be like. I mean, that's a very, very sharp logo, but that's what I would do. There's not much difference that I would change in there. Another thing though that I would be very careful of doing is that you've got a lot of like differentiation here in your actual logo type. So by this, I mean, you've got a huge, huge dot for a full stop or a period if you're in America. I wanna make that smaller because I want it to be the middle ground of the thickness between 
the STB and the design. And I know this is probably your website as well. In fact, I'm going to have a look, stb.design. Ah, it is. It is your website. You've taken that. Very good. But when you have the dot there, I think it's important to keep it a bit smaller so it doesn't like look as if it's from another typeface. I think you need to make it a tiny bit smaller than that even as well. I would just have a little play around with it. A lot of design is just trial and error. Yeah, and that's what I would do. I like the look of this. Now for colors, you can do whatever you really want, but Illustrator has actually come up with a new way of doing colors or gradients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and we're going to make a gradient gradient out of it and this is how I do it I just pick out a gradient here and we do this and I'm going to choose like a cool uh, over here for this color I want to choose like a nice cyan get rid of that one get rid of that one and over here I want to choose like a, a pink cyan and pink just look awesome and that it makes your logo just pop I mean you can choose different colors but I think that looks unreal I'm not too sure but as a logo by itself that looks pretty cool what I don't sound like Bob Ross. My wife is here telling me that I sound like Bob Ross. That's okay, you can do any colour you want. You can do any colour you want. So Simon, as you heard it, I am Bob Will Ross and your logo looks good. We only make happy accidents in here. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online platform where you can learn all sorts of skills by instructors who are professionals in their field. I use Skillshare to actually learn new skills like in calligraphy, learning new type styles, and even learning new ways of designing logos or even cooking. There are so many classes on Skillshare, but I think one of the best things about it is that you can contact the actual Skillshare instructor. So when you take part in a class, you can actually upload your own projects for the instructor to see and to give you help on and to give you sort of like a critique like what I'm doing now. Skillshare is so affordable, it's less than $10 a month and you get access to all of their classes when you pay for it. And Skillshare have been so awesome to us and they're giving you a month of Skillshare premium for free where you can get all these classes that I'm talking about. I'm gonna link some classes down below that I think will help you in logo design and in hand lettering, just the ones that I love. So if you fancy that, click that link down below and remember there's not many people who can. I think it's like 200 people who can actually get that link coupon down below. So be the first, click it down below and show your appreciation to the channel. This next one is from Ryan, and I'm not gonna say your last name either because I don't want to offend you. But I'm gonna give you a bit of the Bob Ross treatment right now as well. He says that you've just finished university or your degree in graphic design, and now you're in the process of creating a logo for your freelance work, which is cool. So everyone should do this. So this is Nigel's, or I think it's Nigel. It's got an H in there, so I'll have to see if that is Nigel. Now, what I like about this is that you've got a cool brush here. It looks very nice. It makes you look like a painting and decorating surface though. So that's one thing I would keep in mind. So typographically, there's a few issues with this design. So what I'm going to do is move this over to the right. And I'm going to just change this up for you really quick. So the TM, I'm gonna get rid of, you don't need that. This paintbrush here could just be one color. And one thing that I wanna do is make sure that every line in here or every brush stroke is consistent. Now, what I can tell you've done, um, which a lot of people make the mistakes when they first start in logo type design, is that you've gone ahead and made this N a lot bigger than it needs to be. So unfortunately, this cannot be a happy accident uh, because it needs to fit in a certain way and instantly that looks so much nicer. Instantly, I like that. Ooh, even better. I'm trying to match them to this, to the actual heights of everything else. I like that. And also here, get rid of that bit there because you don't need it all over there. We want it to be balanced. We want it to look nice as well. I'm gonna put it all in black for now, see if it balances. I mean, that even looks so much nicer than the first one, and that's only a few little mis like things that I've changed in there. Also, what I do like about this logo is the texture that you've got inside it, but what I'm not going to show you how to do, because it will take forever uh, for me to do it, but instead of having all of these bits of texture like here in the top corner and everywhere else, what I would suggest to do is to get rid of some of them and leave it a little bit more subtle because in logo design, you don't really want to have that level of detail. You want people to read that straight away. Another thing you could do in Illustrator or in any other program for that matter to make sure that your logo type works really well is by reflecting it. So by that, select your whole typeface or your whole logo design here and then press O. And then if you hold Option or Alt, you'll get this little reflect box here when you click. Do it vertically 
and just press OK. Now, what we're doing here is we're now looking at this logo, not in the eyes of words, but we're looking at them at eyes of shapes. And that automatically lets you see different problems in the logo design, because when people look at it, they're going to see the issues that are with it because it's not in a proper shape. And this is where it becomes different to look like actual hand lettering, where we need to actually make sure that the logo is working in its full capacity, in a balanced way, in not just like a word, but as text and icons. I'm not sure if that, any of that made sense to you, but basically just reflect it round like I did here and then point out some of the mistakes. So for instance, this N needs to move further in. Also, this part of the H needs to move further up and I'm doing this really crudely, maybe not that far up. This would be a good Bob Ross moment. We don't do mistakes, there's no mistakes. And also with the eye here, you've got a little like flame here or a paintbrush here, which I see what you're doing. Do this, bring it up a further little bit like that and just play around with it and make sure that it looks good. What I like about it is the consistent angle and the kind of rise that you've got on there, uh, which looks good. So what we'll do now is I'll just go ahead and reflect that back to what it was. And you've got yourself an even better logo. As well as that, on the E, we want to make sure that these bits, I'm gonna do it really crudely as well come further up. So this part goes all the way down, so it kind of looks like a, a, a weird brush stroke there. But what I like about it is that it's unique, it's readable, it's legible, but you just need to change it around a little bit. So there you go, Nigel. There's your logo in all its glory. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like your logo to be critiqued by me or someone else, then click that link down below or email the link or email the email down below with your AI file, your Illustrator file, and you could be in the chance of me critiquing your logo. Red subscribe button and turn on notifications so you'll never miss another video critique like this and have yourselves a great day. See you soon, have fun, bye.